So it's a beautiful day out here, guys. Amazing day. Super sunny. I'm going to read the Bible. I was going to have this song that I recorded earlier on, um, I was just going to have it playing on loop in the background while I read the Psalms and Proverbs, but it's too loud. It's too loud as you could probably tell. You probably can't even hear my voice, <laughs> but it's a, I like the little riff, you know, it's C, A minor, F, G. It's great. It's like the romantic chord progression. At the family reunion, this guy, he was playing, um, he was, he was improvising over the chord progression, improvising a melody as well as lyrics. Um, my cousin's, uh, husband, Joe, and it was amazing. Really, really good. He's just like, hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm going to try and sing over it. Um, but I got to play it kind of softly because it overwhelms it when I record it on here and you can't hear my voice but I have to play it really softly and I can barely hear it in, you know in real life but the recording is really loud so I'm gonna drop it drop the volume down right to the absolute minimum so that you can still so I can still kind of place hear something I can hear a little a little bit and maybe I can improvise like Joe did maybe um steal his if i remember it properly how he did it it was good a little louder <laughs> this, this is amazing. I was like, God is speaking through Joe right now. <laughs> I'll probably upload a video later of a little full progression. That's great. But now I'm gonna start. Here we go. Starting with Proverbs 3rd 20. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. So that's a powerful verse to start off 20. It's a good reminder. That's why I didn't drink it all in 2017. And it was probably the most profitable year I've ever had in terms of finances. Maybe not so much in health. Although I did stop smoking right before 2017. Towards the end of 2017, I did um, smoke again briefly. But I didn't smoke any cigarettes. I didn't drink any alcohol. I did. I was sexually immoral, huh? just with myself. <laughs> but the reason why I was able to abstain from any alcohol was because of these proverbs that I was reading continually. I was fairly dedicated to reading the Bible like this every every day. Um. I, what I want to do, guys, is get into that self-authoring program. I want to find my brother, maybe do it with him. That'd be cool. From Jordan Peterson. I had no... Man, he seriously blew up like crazy recently. I think when I subscribed earlier, like a few months ago from to his channel, he had um, less than 100,000. I want to say he had less than 100,000 subscribers. And I had to search him out 
because there's just a lot of people that making clips of his videos. They they were just doing that, you know. I was subscribed to some of their channels, but he and those people that took clips of his videos had more subscribers than he did. But now he's got over a million. I'm like, what's going on? But it seems like a good a, a good thing to figure out where I'm supposed to go in this life because I'm kind of lost. So many options. And uh, stressed out, you know? I feel like I, I'm not living my, my purpose. My, I'm trying to find some meaning in this life and I'm not living it out to the best of that I can. I'm not connected with enough people and enough community. So, that's what I want to do. But that's why I want to remind myself of verses like this in Proverbs. Also, I want to read the meditations from Marcus Aurelius, other like powerful thoughts and ideas and words that help direct your life towards a better direction. Had you not been reminded of those words and easily caught up in this world and thinking and easily deceived thereby by the world, thinking that it's a good thing or it's not that bad, you know? But it's the little things that you do every day, right, that lead you toward bigger thing you know you never drink you replace it with something productive maybe it's not you're not going to see a difference in a day or a year or but five years later those actions it's the compound effect it's the slight edge so that's what i'm saying wine is a mocker strong drink is raging and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise the fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. <laughs> That's how it is now. And in America, we can say whatever we want about the president and <laughs> nothing, nothing goes bad. <laughs> you can provoke, he can provoke the president to anger. <laughs> but not in China, right? Or North Korea. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. But every fool will be meddling. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. So I think that's one thing that I'm pretty good at. Jordan Peterson talks about being agreeable. People that are agreeable and disagreeable and generally women are more agreeable so that they can have more patience with children, with you know raising kids, babies, toddlers. Because I was um, at the family reunion, my bo my cousin Matt he brought uh, some of his friends over and their kids, and the one kid was not agreeable at all. He was not agreeable. <laughs> you know, he's more like demanding, even of adults. You know, no shame. He's like, give me that ball. <laughs> you know, no no fear. And I'm I'm just more of an agreeable person. I guess that's a feminine characteristic of mine. Like even when I'm driving around Uber and Lyft, like I, I very rarely will deny a ride or just say no, that I'm not gonna take you to this gas station, you know? You can pretty much say wherever you want and I'm gonna take you there. <laughs> I'm glad that not everyone's like that because people that uh, could easily take advantage and just make you wait an hour while they're grocery shopping. So that there's disagreeable people that set a standard so that those people are not expecting everyone to just do everything they want and, you know, get a $5 lift ride, make them wait for two hours or whatever. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I'm saying, as I'm pretty agreeable, so I cease from strife. I don't want to enter into conflict. So that's what I think strife means to me, is conflict. Let's see what the definition of strife is, guys. But there's moments in time where you're supposed to, right? What was I looking? Oh, yeah. I was looking up Jordan Peterson's whole thing. This article seemed to... It's a lot of info here. This lobsters help to explain why human hierarchies exist. Interesting ideas there. But so, find strife. Angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. Conflict, so that's what I thought. Friction, discord, disagreement, dissension, dispute, 
argument quarreling. Yeah, I'm all I'm all about controversy. <laughs> I'm, for the most part, I'm against that. I'd rather be agreeable. <laughs> but every fool will be meddling. <laughs> Just try to, trying to start arguments for no reason, right? The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. So, I don't, it's also good reminders for me because I can very easily enter into the sluggard mindset. <laughs> so, boom. Fuck it if it's cold outside, although it's not. Right now, it's amazing out here. <laughs> so, you gotta you gotta do the hard things. That's why I wanna develop a habit of, you know, boom, take a cold shower every day. Take some apple cider vinegar with cayenne pepper. You know, it's very, it's not pleasant, it's bitter, but it's good for you. So you get used to doing the hard things, to not taking the path of least resistance all the time. So counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. So can you be a man of understanding and draw out the counsel within your own heart through the self-authoring program, through you know other, other intelligent great men's ideas and questions to ask yourself to help you lead a greater life and feel more content? have that pursuit of happiness and still experience all emotions of life but maybe have a de- just um, like if you have more meaning in your life you can push through the struggles easier and you can hand deal with the negative emotions more and it adds an exponential level of exponential increase to the positive emotions when you have more meaning I think I want to read that also, Viktor Frankl, right? Man's Search for Meaning. He survived the Holocaust. What do you guys think about all the Holocaust deniers? All right, I'm getting distracted. It'd probably be best to do this. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Do this um, early in the morning, but this is beautiful right now. So incredible. Oh man, I'm crazy. Okay. (laughs) Most men will proclaim every one his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Interesting verse right there. I think I'm more, more, depends on your word faithful. But I, I, I don't talk about my own goodness very often, I don't think. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. So we got also these words, you know, walk in your integrity. Read this Bible, baby. I want, I'm interested in the book Aeon. Jordan Peterson mentioned, mentioned it in his August Q&A that he did a couple days ago from um, some psychologist. He said it's like the scariest book he's ever read. <laughs> That's what's amazing now is we, people, people can be an author of books and then they can have a live stream Q&A and you can see the person face to face and see their ideas. It's different than just reading their books. Now, technology has really changed a lot of things and made life more amazing. We're in the greatest times right now, guys. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scatter, scattereth away all evil with his eyes. I believe that. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment, right? Even my cousin Matt, you know, it's like certain people you don't want to behave a certain way around because you know how they're going to react to your behavior if it's not pleasing to them. So they don't even have to say anything, just their presence, their aura, their sights. Their, they can scatter the way evil with their eyes. You don't want to do evil in front of them. Because it'll just, it'll just be too uncomfortable for you. So that's a great thing. I want to have that for myself, you know? God's always watching me, yo. Walk in my integrity. Because the Lord is uh, the Lord is with me. And I don't want to do evil in front of Him. And also have that for other people too, right? That's why it doesn't happen around me. Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Who can say that? I cannot. <laughs> or can I? Diverse weights and diverse measures, both of them are alike 
abomination to the Lord. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. The hearing ear and the seeing eye the Lord hath made even both of them. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Good reminder there. It is not, it is not, saith the buyer, but when he is gone his way, then he boasteth. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious, precious jewel. Take his garments that is shorty for a stranger, and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Deceit, lying, or falsehood. Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice, make war. So, make war, huh? So every purpose is established by, by counsel, so... And with good advice, make war. So, I guarantee these other translations change that word war. King James is the most rawest, realist. No, it says... Plans are established by advice. By wise guidance, you wage war. Wow. So let's see what the NLT's got to say. Proverbs 2018. Wage war. Those are some strong words. That's right. Wage war on your 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 goals, right? Storm the gates. Storm the castle, shoot, shoot your goals, get them done. Plans succeed through good counsel. Don't go to war without wise advice. Interesting, guys. By wise, wise guidance, you wage war. Wage war. Make war. <laughs> he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Like the parable of the prodigal son, right? Took his, took his, inheritance, took his inheritance hastily. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. That's a powerful one as well, right? Depends on the situation. What am I going to do? Somebody steals my bike. Oh, God, oh God God's got my back. <laughs> now, if, I, if I'm able to chase him down, get it back. I think I did right there. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. A lot of people lying, huh? Weighing their wheat and corn for diverse weights. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Boom, see? Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Jordan Peterson's got another website, Understand Yourself, right? I was considering doing that later, but the self-authoring one. So I wanna, wanna, I wanna know more. But there is that Moody Bible Institute that talks about, he very, he criticizes greatly the whole, it's a poem, I believe, that is mentioned, is quoted in Think and Grow Rich of I am the master of my fate and the captain of my soul. Which reminds me of self-authoring, like you can define your definite purpose in life and you can achieve it. You are the master of your fate, the captain of your soul. You decide what you do in this life. But in the Moody Bible Institute, he mentions a few Bible verses that talks about how, like this one, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Like the Lord directs your steps. Man has tons of plans, and you know, man plans, God laughs. What's the truth, y'all? 
It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy, and after vows to make enquiry. Whoa. A wise king scattereth the wicked, and bringeth, bringeth the wheel over them. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upholden by mercy. The glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. It reminds me of um, Greg Braden. He's got that, that amazing long gray hair. That's like the perfect, he's like the, the epitome of that verse. There's many proverbs that talk about, you know, the crown of glory is, of an old man is his gray head. And that, Greg Braden's got the perfect gray, gray hair. It's like healthy old man, but boom, gray hair. It's like, you know, epitome of experience and wisdom. <laughs> I want to be like that when I grow, grow old. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil, so do stripes the inward parts of the belly. So what's up with that, right? People that cut themselves, are they cutting themselves to cleanse away evil? The inward parts of the belly, huh? Purging medicine against evil. Yeah, when you get freaking whipped, you don't want to do evil anymore, right? So there's the Proverbs 20 of, of today, y'all. 21 tomorrow. Now we get the Psalms 66. To the chief musician, a song or psalm. Make a joyful noise unto God, all you lands. I hope that my... It's not still going. Good. <laughs> Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. All the earth, sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. <laughs> or yield feigned obedience, lie. <laughs> Interesting. Feigned obedience, lie. <laughs> All shall thine enemies submit. All the earth shall worship thee, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name, Selah. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. Terrible. Like you ride the motorcycle at 160. <laughs> it's terrible, yo. <laughs> Super frightening. It's exhilarating. <laughs> like a roller coaster, right? Exhilaration. It's a combo of fear and excitement. Terrible. It's the fear of the Lord. It's my understanding. All the earth shall worship thee and sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Selah. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. O oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. The voice of his praise to be heard. So we are the voice of God's praise. Bless our God, ye people. We, we can bless the Lord, right? Which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. Holds our soul in life. And our feet won't be moved. It's like, um... You, you won't, um... Be nervous, right? You won't flinch. No matter what's going around or around you, 
your feet won't be moved. You trust in the Lord. For thou, O God, hast proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Thou broughtest us into the nets. Thou laidest affliction upon our loins. I've had that <laughs> affliction upon my loins. Thou hast cast men, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth hath spoken when I was in trouble. Haven't we all done that, right? We're in trouble. God, if you'll just save me from this, I'll, I'll, I'll stop doing this, or I'll, or I'll do this, right? It's in the Psalms back, you know, thousands of years ago. He, even he said it. I was, I was doing it earlier. I don't remember what. I honestly don't remember. I think it was something like, um, yeah, I, I was like, I'm generally, sometimes I can lose things rather easily, but I'm getting better, you know, I have to be, if I'm not obsessively compulsive over my belongings, like making sure I have them at all times, I'll lose them, you know? That's why I'm like, gotta be obsessively like, okay, I got my keys, I got my wallet, my phone. Okay, uh, everywhere I go. Otherwise, I'm going to lose it. So when I get stoned, I enter into a new habit. You know, if I smoke marijuana, I enter into a new habit and I'm uh, more nervous to adopt that obsessive compulsive. I'm more ashamed of it or something. I don't know. I, I enter into a new way of being and uh, I lose things all the time. I lost my wallet. Thank God for the kind people that return them to me. But I, I was considering stopping... Um, smoking cigarettes and marijuana, you know, a few days ago, and uh, I lost my keys, and I was like, God, all right, fine, I'm gonna stop. If you help me find my keys this time, because <laughs> I was like, that's horrible. You lose your dang keys. My, it's my car to get in my house and everything. It's just stupid. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna stop as long as you help me find my keys. And of course, it was nearby, and I found them. But it was starting to get dark outside, and I lost my my kombucha bottle the other day because I was stoned and just like dumb. So that's just a, a small example, stupid example, but I know I've done it in other moments as well. So it is important to actually follow through with your vows to God. Even the psalmist says it, you know, I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered and my mouth hath spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatlings. So Jordan Peterson really, um, he, he really brings to life this idea of sacrifices. Because I really was like, I don't understand why the fuck... People, why these people of old, these ancient people, would sacrifice cows to their god? I don't understand it. The best calf they've got without a spot and all this kind of stuff. Why are they doing this? It makes no sense. It's just dumb. They're just going to kill this animal, this living being that's not doing anything wrong. They're just going to kill him. You know, cut its head off, make it bleed and all this. Why? Why don't they just make a more productive use of it? It just seems like a waste, right? But he, Jordan Peterson really explained it well. It's like, it proves you're serious about something. You know, if you're making a vow to God and you're gonna kill the best thing that you got, you aren't gonna do that vainly, without a cause. You're gonna do that and you, seriously, you know? It's just it proves you're serious about something you're not, you're not gonna just like I like I did I just threw away a half a pack of cigarettes with the one hitter and then I threw out all the weed I had in um in the dumpster it's not it's like I'm serious I'm quitting stopping this at least this year I don't know what I'm gonna do next year but at least this fucking year you know I'm not doing this anymore 
I'm just making dumb decisions and it's not productive and it's not heading me down a good path. Getting what I want out of this life, what I need to get out of this life, doesn't, doesn't help breed emotions of, of um, love or pride, you know? It, it only helps breed emotions of shame and anxiety, so, or guilt. So I don't want any more of those emotions. So it's like, boom, I'm serious. I didn't just, you know, oh, it's a waste. Why don't you just finish the cigarettes and the weed? It's like, no, I'm just, boom, it's gone. And I thought, I'm extreme like that. I do that all the dang time. I've done that multiple times in my life. Hopefully this is the last time, but we'll see. You know, start a, a regimen of restoring my health and getting into greater health, improve, improvement of health. So, and we got, uh, so that, that was good. That Jordan Peterson's ideas have really um, been intriguing to me. He talks about how there's a relationship. It's not a, by coincidence that there are 12 disciples of Jesus and there's also 12 zodiac houses, right? I'm like, whoa, that's, that's interesting. Didn't think about that. So, uh, to drink this here so I dropped a stevia spoon in my dang coffee <laughs> so these are some powerful psalms how did I miss that, right? For thou, O God, hast proved us. Thou hast tried us. Tried us as silver is tried. So God is going to prove us, right? We make a vow unto God, he's going to prove us. And I can't, I can remember multiple times where God proves us. Like, oh, you're serious about this? And then, like, things will come into my life. Like, I'm talking about giving to the poor, having pity on the poor, lending to the Lord. Ever since I started reading these verses now, more people, it seems like more people are just straight up approaching me, asking me for money, and it's like God is proving that I'm trusting Him. This lady came up to me yesterday and she was, gave me, gave me this whole story about her house burned down. She was like an elderly woman with gray hair, African American. She reminded me of my roommate that she maybe she would look like that. 40 years, 50 years from now or something. Long story short, she, she gave me a story and it seemed to check out mentally. She mentioned landmarkers around this area, so. But, so I gave and I'm just thinking I'm lending to the Lord, you know, I'm expecting nothing in return. And I made just enough money, you know. Ho, ho, I thought about Matthew David Hurtado, he talks about when you give to the poor, you're giving for your health. Because generally, in my experience, homeless people, they appear relatively healthy. Not all the time, but, you know, you look at them, they, they, they're not, most of the time they're not obese or anything. And when you give to people for spiritual, like you tie to the church and things, you're giving for your financial health. Because you're trusting God for your finances. So I guess I, that's what I need to start doing, you know? Trust God for everything. Stop thinking like this businessman, I suppose, you know? Trust God for my, my, the route that's gonna guide me in the, down the right path of what I need to do in my life, and then trust myself and, my, and then my God. And not go searching for so, so much from other people's thoughts and advice. That's what you, other people need to do too, right? Trust, it's good to, to seek out advice and counsel, but also to, to have confidence in your God and in yourself and not waver. That's what, that's how you really succeed, right? The, the, the people that have the largest followings seem to, ha seem to follow the least amount of people because they're following their, their God. That's my, uh, my thought think about social media right the people that have the greatest followings have the least they follow the least amount of people it seems anyway 
O oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. For thou, O oh God, hast proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Face this way. Get some sun. Thou broughtest us into the net. Thou laidest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. I will go into thy bosom with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth hath spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats, Selah. Come and hear, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. So, let's go back to this, the defin define extol, right? It's like the highest praise you can give someone. It's like major exhortation, right? Extol. Praise enthusiastically, exalts, adulates, rhapsodize over, rave about, enthuse about, or over. <laughs> Sing the praises of, praise of the skies, acclaim, exalt, extol, exalt and extol. <laughs> rave. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Amen. So, interesting one there. Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Reminds me of Jesus talking about ask and you will receive or, you know, whatever you ask for when you pray, believe that you have received it and you will have it. But he goes on that you won't get it if you have, if you harbor unforgiveness in your hearts. It's important to forgive other people and make it right with your neighbor before you get what you want out of your life. Forgive others first. So iniquity and unforgiveness and I believe also it can be correlated to um, unforgiveness of yourself through the emotions of guilt and shame. Iniquity can be unforgiveness of others or yourself, feeling shame and guilt. So the Lord will not hear your prayer if you have that iniquity in your heart. So forgive yourself. Blessed be God, and then you can say those words, Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. 67. To the chief musician on Neganoth, a psalm or song, God be merciful unto us, and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah. Just like the sun, baby. Just like the sun. Seriously, I almost cried over here walking walking out here today because I was kind of stuck inside the last few days not seeing the sun and when you look up at the sun and it's like God blessed be the Lord and it shines God the sun just changes your whole everything there's a guy on YouTube that talks about heliotherapy and how the sun can heal many diseases I mean, I'm completely in aligned with that you know Screw this sunblock and sunglasses. You don't need none of that stuff. The sun can heal you. It's, it's destined. It's completely natural. God created the sun and all that. It's con completely natural and free. That's why it resonates is true for me. And cause his face to shine upon us. Selah. A shine with us <laughs> that thy way may be known upon earth thy saving health among all nations saving health 
It's like salvation, just like Neville Goddard talks about, you know, Jesus being the savior of, of the earth. Well, if you are in ill health, what's gonna save you is good health, right? So that's why it's a savior. And savior being your imagination, right? Imagining you're in good health. So that's what I still am struggling with, perfect health. Uh, you know, although I'm grateful for my state of health now, that where I could be, where I am now. But let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. As we can bless the Lord, God can bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Fear that enthralling, enthusiastic excitement and, and fear. <laughs> Sixty-eight. I want to be a chief musician. <laughs> so he's writing these psalms to the chief musician. Is he talking about David or is he talking about God? God is the chief musician? A psalm or song of David. Maybe that's what he's talking about, right? Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. So it's like I'm going to write a song to the chief musician. <laughs> Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yeah, let them exceedingly rejoice. Rejoice with gladness. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. Jah, and rejoice before him. So here's a psalm that says his name, right? His name Jah, or Yah, because there's no J's back then. So much controversy in the biblical community talking about the name of God and how it's Yahweh, Yehovah, and there's no J sounds back in those days. Anyways. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the, the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. O God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, Selah. The earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation hath dwelt therein, thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. The army of those that published it. Kings of armies did flee apace. And she that tarried at home divided the spoil. Thou, though ye have lion, lion among the pots, yet shall, be, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. When the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow and salmon. The king of God, the hill of God, is as the hill of Bashan, and high hill as the hill of Bashan. Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God desireth to dwell in, yeah, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The chariots of God are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. 
thou hast received gifts for many. Yeah, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. The Lord God's dwelling among the rebellious and taking captivity captive. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us up with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah. He that is our God is the God of salvation, and unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. So what's that one all about, huh? Let's see a different translation here. God is to us a God of deliverance. To the Lord, the, to the Lord, the Lord belongs escape from death. Death can mean many things, right? Death just means neg could be negative emotion or genuinely escape from death. What is? Let's see what NLT says. Sixty-eight twenty, Psalm sixty-eight twenty, NLT. Our God is a God who saves. The Sovereign Lord rescues us from death. So that is different than the KGV. Uh, and unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. But God shall wound, shall wound the head of his enemies. Are we still going, right? But God shall wound the head of his enemies, and the hairy scalp of such an one as goeth on still in his trespasses. Whoa. <laughs> the hairy scalp of such an one as goeth on still in his trespasses. So God would wound my head if I kept going down in my trespasses. <laughs> the Lord said, I will bring again from Bashan. I will bring my people again from the depths of the sea that thy foot may be dipped in the blood of thine enemies, and the tongue of thy dogs in the same. They have seen thy goings, O God, even the goings of my God, my King, in the sanctuary. The singers went before, the players on instruments followed after, among them were the damsels playing with tim tim timbrels. Damsels, I love that word. Damsels and um, lass. Damsel and lass. You gotta find me a lass. <laughs> and a damsel playing with timbrel. Bless, bless ye God in the congregations, even the Lord from the fountain, fountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin with their ruler the princes of Judah and their council, the princes of Zebulun and the princes of Naphtali. Thy God hath commanded thy strength. Strengthen, O God, that which thou hast wrought for us. Because of thy temple at Jerusalem shall kings bring presents unto thee. Rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of the bulls, with the calves of the people, till every one submit himself with pieces of silver, Scatter thou the people that delight in war. People that want to wage war with wise counsel. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Sing unto God, ye kingdoms of the earth. O sing praises unto the Lord. Selah. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. I gotta figure out. Um, I, gotta, I gotta learn a uh, singing. Um, so I, that's what I need to do, guys. Do right-handed scales and sing them out here. That's my next desire. <laughs> Learn all the scales, triads, with my right hand and sing them out here. So I can teach my right hand and also teach my vocal abilities. 
princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Sing unto God, ye kingdoms of the earth. O sing praises unto the Lord, Selah. To him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens, which were of old, lo, he doth send out his voice, and that a mighty voice. He gives his voice. Ascribe ye strength unto God. His excellency is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. O God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his, unto his people. Blessed be God. He gives strength and power to me. Blessed be God. 69 to the chief musician upon Shoshin, Shoshinim. A psalm of David, save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire, where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters, where the, where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Guiltiness. Guiltiness. See that? Sins and guiltiness are synonymous in Hebrew. Guiltiness. Shame. It's the same. Boom. Translator's notes. It says it right there. That's why whatever is without faith is sin. If you're if you're guilty, you don't have you don't you're not living on faith or walking by faith. If you feel shame, you're not walking by faith. Whatever is not what and and you cannot please God without faith. Whatever is without faith is sin. You can't please God without faith. And just like I told you guys when I was high, before after that car accident, for while for while there may be apprehensions with wickedness, it gives testimony to condemnation. For a troubled conscience always forecasts harshness. For fear is nothing else but unfaithfulness to thinking helpful things. So there's a difference between the fear of God and fear of thinking unhelpful things. Being faithful to thinking unhelpful things. Fear is faith in bad things. So without faith it's impossible to please God. Whatever is without faith is sin. I, guess I should have the exact verses there. Unfaithfulness to thinking helpful things. That's so that you gotta have faith in thinking helpful things. And sin is being guilty. So have faith that God forgives your sins. And he forgives your feeling of guiltiness and then there's no reason to feel guilty. I'm blessed, man. I've done some jacked up things to people in my life and I am so grateful that they have forgiven me, allowing me, helping me, supporting me to forgive myself and that God has forgiven me too altogether. Even if they didn't forgive me, at least I know that I, God forgives me and that I forgive myself and I've changed my path. I have repented, right? I've completely changed my course of action. Definition of repent, feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. Feel remorse, regret, be sorry, rue, reproach oneself, be ashamed, feel contrite. Be penitent, penitent, be remorseful, be repentant. View or think of an action or omission with deep regret or remorse. Feel regret or penitence about. So I'm not sure if this Google or perhaps Merriam-Webster definition of repentance is the biblical definition of repentance, of what Jesus is trying to say when he says repent. I don't think he's saying, hey, repent, feel shame about your actions. Repent feel remorseful, feel guilty. I don't think that's what he's telling people. To turn from, this is what the real, this is what it is. 
the Merriam-Webster definition since 1820, to turn from sin and dedicate oneself to the amendment of one's life. I think that's the first definition of what he's trying to say. To change one's mind, to change one's course, to turn around, stop smoking and you know smoking cigarettes and marijuana, and stop it and do something else like stop fucking eating fatty <laughs> fast as long as you can not feel sorrow regret or contrition but to to change one's mind like Neville Goddard talks about now in the Bible we speak of prayer and prayer to the world means begging but not in the Bible it's Thanksgiving it's praise it's not petition we speak in the Bible of repentance, and the world thinks that it means to regret, to be remorseful. That's not what the Bible teaches. Prayer and repentance are almost synonymous terms. Here, here he talks about the word sin hasn't a thing to do with breaking any moral code. The word sin means to miss the mark. That's what it means. You have a goal in life and you haven't achieved it. Well, then you are sinning. You're without faith, faith in your goal in life. Here's Neville Goddard's definition of repentance. To repent is simply a radical change of attitude. That is what repentance means. For I radically change my attitude towards life. I will then view the world and see the world from that change of attitude. And that change is a change of consciousness. And that change will be externalized in my world. Now, repentance is at once man's responsibility and a gift of God. I love those, those thoughts. So here we are now. My sins are not here hid for me, my guiltiness. So everyone experiences it at some point. God knows you're feeling guilty, if you are. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. So when you jack up and you're a leader of people, don't let other people, you know, he's praying that they don't, they don't feel ashamed. They don't feel shame, right? Or they don't. So because of, because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproached thee are fallen upon me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garments, and I became a proverb to them, a byword, right? They that sit in the gate speak against me, and I was the song of the drunkards drinkers of strong drink but as for me my prayer is unto thee O Lord in an acceptable time O God in the multitude of thy mercy hear me in the truth of thy salvation deliver me out of the mire and let me not sink let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters let not the water flood overflow me neither let the deep swallow me up and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, and hide not thy face from thy servants, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily, make haste to hear me. Draw nigh unto my soul, and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame, and my dishonor, mine adversaries are all before thee, like bugs, like flies, <laughs> mosquitoes. Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness, and I looked for some to take pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none to lament with me. They gave me also gall for meats, poison. And in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table become a snare before them. And that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. 
just like welfare in today's day, right? Owen Benjamin talks about that. Welfare did for the black family what slavery couldn't do. Tear it apart. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. I'm going to play this song, because I, I think it'll sound cool for people towards the end here. Just enough so that you can hear it, but I can't. <laughs> Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Add, add, and punishment of iniquity unto their iniquity and let them not come into thy righteousness let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous but I am poor and sorrowful let thy salvation O God set me up on high I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving this also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hooves. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Let the heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moveth therein creepeth. For God will save Zion, and will build the cities of Judah, that they may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. 70. Final Psalm. To the chief musician, the Psalm of David, to bring to remembrance. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, aha, aha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and to be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. O Lord, make no tarrying. Anyone out there that feels like they are poor and needy, call upon God and have him make haste to help you. I hope it happens within the hour. Peace.